Hello everybody, welcome to my shop. Today we're going to start the process to get this uh, front clip removed. I've been soaking those nuts and bolts that hold it on for about, uh, I originally only wanted to do it for a week, but the holidays hit, a bunch of honeydews hit, and the spring hit, and uh, so I had a little preparation to do for my gardening. So anyway, we got a little delayed, but we're going to get back on it. So now we're going to get this clip off so we can get easier access to that engine. Now we're underneath the truck and we're going to attempt to get some of these bolts out. What I'm going to do is take this wire wheel here and I'm going to hit the head of them bolts and the threads on these others to see if I can knock some of the uh, 60 plus years of crud out. It'll help the, uh, it'll help the socket get a better bite. We'll let that die down a minute. Now what I've got here is I've got some half inch socket. That's what these are. I'm going to attempt to get that off with the impact. got those three out unfortunately I won't be able to get my impact on that I'm gonna have to use wrenches they're also I believe they're half inch
Now, the whole thing's turning. It broke. Well, let's see if we have better luck with that one. That broke. <laughs> They're all breaking. Well, one more. <clears throat> See that? It's loose right there. So this hole side other than this one more bolt I got to get off and loose and uh, I'm going to take my air chisel to that bad boy since the other one's broke this one is too and I don't want to crack my knuckles so I'll be right back okay we got this side broke loose and you can see perhaps you can see the holes there you got the three bolts here one one two and three and then you got the four bolts down that holds the inner fender there to the outside of the uh, uh, cab. Now, I had to cut away that top bolt. I couldn't get a wrench up there to it. I'm going to look at my box if I can find a longer box in half inch. And uh, took a little bit longer. Made a big mess cutting it using that air chisel. This is what I used right here. So he's uh, noisy and made a big mess. But anyway, we got that broke loose. We're going to go on to the other side now. Uh, the other side's the exact same way, so I'm not going to bore you with the uh, uh, with getting those bolts off because it's the same thing. Yeah, exact same thing, just about. So I'll get them off, then I'll show you underneath the uh, radiator. There's two bolts there. And then we'll come up top and do some more. So I'll let you know. Well, I'm on the passenger side or right side. And there is a difference in how the inner fender bolts to the cab and I just wanted to point that out if you see here's one two three bolts you notice there's no heads because the heads are in actually on the inside of the cab this is the threaded fasteners on the fender which is opposite from the left side or driver side 
So to show you here, here's one, two, one, two, and three up there at the top. Hopefully you can see them. So we'll get those three out and uh, we'll go and get to the front. All right, now we're underneath this thing here at the front end. And I've already removed one of the bolts. And this is underneath the radiator support. Let me get a light here. All right. Now you can see that's the bottom of the radiator support. That's the radiator. There's hardly nowhere to put a light. Okay, here we go. This is the actual radiator, bottom of the radiator here. Here's part of the support right here. And there's two bolts that hold it in. And you can see the bracket here. There's a bracket here. I've removed this bolt. I'm going to remove this one. And uh, we'll see if we can do it with my impact. Almost. Now what happens is that uh, it has a kick. There we go. All right. Believe it or not, that takes care of the bolts on the underneath side of this. This is a good record. Looks like there's some kind of a felt pad there. Where the other one didn't have it, it was totally wore away. You see the bolt here. Let's get down here. You can see it has shoulders where it catches in the square up there. Let's see if we can get a good shot of it up there see how it catches the shoulder and that's how it holds it while you bolt it all right now i think i'm going to take the bumper and the front apron off too while i'm at it but that'll be my next shot All right, now we're going to, yeah, I'm going to take this bumper and apron off. It'll make it easier to get the motor hoist in here, the cherry picker in. Put a little bit of better light out here, in here. This is a, these are three quarter inch bolts. I'm going to need an extension. One of these days when I grow up, I'm going to get me a hoist and I can do this standing up. All right. Okay. Where's the bolt go? I will find it. Okay, there he is. Hold the bumper on. Bring him out 
right here. Well, I guess I didn't hit record when I pulled the bumper off. Or there's the brackets, and there's the bumper down there. Come off real easy. Again, those are three quarter inch bolts, nuts, nuts that hold to these chrome bolts that go through. And there's the uh, custom bumper guard I picked up in a trade. It's supposed to be for a car, and somebody cut it down, and well, I like it, so I'm using it. So, anyway, that should hopefully take care of what's on the bottom for now. That will go up top. All right, now we're up top, and uh, now we're going to work on these two cross braces right here, these two, all right? And uh, you can see there's two bolts there, two bolts there, there's two bolts on this end, and two bolts on that end. So we're going to use the impact on them real quick. Those are half inch bolts also. Guess I could remove the air cleaner and get more room. Right. I can see where those guys really like those electric. You don't have that airline to have to fight with. Uh, I'll add that to my when I grow up and uh, make a lot of money. I'll uh, add get me some electric impacts to add to my arsenal here. So back when I started getting into wrenching, air tools was the thing. And that's what I invested in. So anyway. That valve cover is just going to block my way. I might take a wrench to it. That's all right. You want to, if you see it's not going to turn, don't round it off. They're not that long anyway. This, uh, old 216's been blowing all kinds of oil for, well, for miles for miles and miles and years and years so it's uh there's oil film all over this engine compartment makes it a little slippery Now, I'm going to mark these uh, braces because they're uh, going to put an L on the uh, left side or the driver's side. So I put them back in the same location. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to mix them up. They're adjusted from the factory and I'm going to guess they're pretty good that way. All right. Also, I'll change over to here. Let's get the camera adjusted up some. Hide it over there. Alright. Now one of those bolts I can't get to with an impact. So I'm gonna get it with a wrench while I'm here. Again, this not uh they're not that long. Now I'm keeping those somewhat organized over on the bench and I'm going to put them in baggies. Oh, I'm getting a flashing battery light. That's not good. Let's see if we can get this last one off. Before it goes dead. Pretty, a 
lot of crud on them threads would be my guess. Again, this is over 60 years old, and I doubt this clip has been off, so. Before, since it was built, Minus the uh, the wiring and some of the hoses, this whole front clip's about ready to pull. So anyway, let me uh, charge this battery up some. I think I can take some with my cell phone. And uh, you see this? Look at that. See, it's about ready to come out. All is one piece. That's pretty slick. All right, read right back. I got my telephone doing some recording here. I just wanted to point out a few things. This wiring harness right here that runs across all the way over to that connection point right there where my finger's pointing, that doesn't have to go. That can stay, all right, because that goes off with the, with the clip. What I need to do is mark these connections right here. There's better and uh, just unscrew them from that terminal strip and that'll take care of the actual factory wiring and down there i don't know if you can see it on the generator there's two wires there that'll have to come off because it's in this uh it's in this uh wiring harness that uh i've pretty much easily got off the fender and then i've got two wires now i added uh turn signals to this truck to make it safe to drive on these modern roads and uh, brake lights on wet which also meant brake lights on both sides so anyway I've got uh, two wires that uh, I'm going to cut and I'm going to have to re-splice in order to uh, put them back together now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, uh, plug-in connectors on them and uh, I'll show that in more in depth but uh, to where they'll only plug in to the one they're supposed to okay and uh, like I put a male on one side and a female on the other and then flip it for the other wire so you can't plug two males together two females and that'll make it easy to put it back together and other than that and this upper radiator hose and the lower radiator hose this entire front clip will be ready to pull and uh, anyway Wondered my uh, battery and my camera is charging, so I just wanted to point that out. Now I'm gonna do a little investigative work. I've got no way of uh, securing this uh, phone up, so I'll just do a little bit of work. I'm gonna take those hoses off. I'm sure nobody needs to see that, and these heater hoses I didn't point it out, and also this overflow hose. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them off. I won't record that, and uh, hopefully the camera battery will be recharged and ready to go again. and ready to take connect disconnect now oh, that's a tire wrap that sliced my arm Mary. and that's something see these are eyelet bolts so you got to take the nuts plane off now i'm not worried about marking these because i'm not going back with this six volt generator system i'm actually going 12 volt alternator so this is by basically ready to swing up and out of the way so, Will, I have no way of securing this phone, so I don't have a stand for it. So, anyway, I'll swing it up and show the aftermath. All right, here's the wiring harness swung up and out of the way. This is the original cloth-covered wiring. Some of this I really need to replace. That seems to be good, but there on the firewall, the feed to the horn is pretty needs replaced. That green wire is what I added for the tack. 
and then there's a hot wire there's some wires going down there to the starter these disconnected for the in engine pull but they don't need disconnected for the front clip basically the clip is now ready to pull and uh by everybody uh, all my helps away at work today so i can't get it i can't get it done at this particular moment and i'm actually thinking about rigging up something to maybe using my cherry picker to do it so i may try that i don't know but at this point that clip is ready to pull out of this off this truck All right, well, looks like my cherry picker is going to work. At this particular time, I've got it. This whole clip is loose and suspended, just hanging. I secured it to the, uh, with a chain, to the two forward bolt holes of the, uh, that held the top uh, cross braces. And uh, so neat. now what I need to do is do some, uh, maneuvering around here in the shop get some room and I can get that clip put down and out of the way uh, we'll just pull the GMC out and the Kubota out and do something with some of that junk back hair I need to be able to get to it what's going to be behind that clip for some uh, other stuff I've got to do so I can't uh, landlock it so anyway just wanted to show that uh, cherry picker will in fact work and we're suspended and we are ready to go i'll show some see that's uh that's the old welt it's like a gasket that kept metal on metal and that's not in bad shape i mean that's 60 plus years there since that's been off probably and uh, as you can see the radiator everything comes off i guess i could have fully removed that hose i'll do that when i do it one unique uh, advantage of going with a 54 235 engine is that the hoses will bolt right up, the electrics will bolt right up, and the uh, water pump and fan will be positioned at the exact same height as that uh, 216 was. Now, later model 235s, you had to come up with an adapter because the fans would uh, sit too high or possibly too low. I can't remember what it is, but this 1954 engine is a perfect uh, bolt right up to the uh, uh, bell housing. And I've ordered a new clutch throw up bearing and pressure plate. Should be here in a couple days. And uh, well, I got a lot of pressure washing to do once I pull that engine anyway. The bell housing that's on the 54 will not work because of the cross members. They changed the way the uh, rear cross member uh, was angled and positioned uh, after, uh, well, in 54 from the 49. So I've got to use the uh, 49 bell housing. But that's okay. It'll bolt right up. That's one good thing. So anyway, I'm going to do some maneuvering and we'll get this uh, clipped down and out of the way. All right, I'm going to start the 49 GMC and pull it out of the way. But I want to brag on it a little bit. Now, this hasn't run in a couple days. It's, uh, so it's cold. And let's see. Let's give it one pump of the throttle. We're in park. Sometimes I keep it neutral so I can move them around. Let's see if it starts right up. Look at that. That's a good engine. Just kick it down a little bit. Of course, we're not working on this, but I wanted to brag on it a little bit. I pulled the clip off this to put the, to take the uh, the 256 cylinder that was in this and uh, put uh, this 350 in there. 
Uh, that's covered in another video if you hadn't seen it. Perhaps I'll put a link up on it. Uh, the story about this GMC. But anyway, I wanted to show that. We'll get the Kubota started and get it out of the way and we'll do some maneuvering. So we can put that clip down somewhere. <laughs> Anywhere, but somewhere. All right, I don't know how good that's going to show it, but I've got the uh, clip off. I've got it almost clear of everything. I'm going to take it up just a hair higher. Now we're going to attempt to roll it over here out of the way. actually not that heavy it's just sort of awkward but anyway I don't know how good it's taking it I'll edit it out if it's not taking it good but more than likely I'm going to turn it sideways that's how I had the GMC and that was how I was able to squeeze all my stuff back in here so I'll do it like this I can get more help to come help uh, Put it down. Okay. I believe I could scoot it. Perhaps if I would have thought this out better, I could have come up with some dollars. something that's going to lay on my legs. So I think I'm going to take that piece of cardboard. And use it maybe to slide some kind of way. that's getting it, but I'll worry about that here in a minute. Let's uh, let's look at what we got to work with now. Boy, that sure is going to make it a lot easier to work on this thing. There you go. It's, now those are lever action shocks. That one's good, and I noticed when I was working on this thing, that one's totally broke loose. So I need to get a uh, new bushings for that side while I got it down. And let's see. Oh, that just makes it so much easier to do work on these things. And as you can see, there's not a whole lot to getting that, uh, to getting that clip off. And it's not going to take too much room. And I can get at everything back there. Now, I already did my fertilizer spreading for my corn patch and my pumpkin patch, so I don't need that. Now that tub there is my corn that I'll put out, but I won't put that out till June. I will be doing some pressure washing, and I need to get at that cover there when I'm out mowing or doing any garden work uh, in the hot sun. One day I'll put them lights on. But anyway, that's a whole other story. So that's the clip right there. I'll do some more follow, a few more follow-ups on it. And that's what it looks like. With the clip off.